Excellent. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about free space diffractions. What are free space diffractions? Consider the following. Light is incident upon a sim simple mesh that has a couple of openings cut out in the center. In your typical ray optical pass tracer, some light rays would pass through the openings and continue to travel with their directions remaining unchanged. As we depart the ray optical context, the picture changes. Light consists of electromagnetic waves, and as these waves are partially occluded by objects, they diffract, meaning that the structure of the underlying electromagnetic field breaks up, after which the field reorganizes into new waves that carry light into new directions that may potentially lie in the shadowed regions. In other words, free space diffractions is when propagating light is partially occluded by geometry, upon which it diffracts, and figuratively speaking, bends around geometry, and this happens everywhere all the time with all objects and all edges. And this is interesting because free space diffractions produce distributions of energy that at times heavily depart from the ray optical uh, prediction. There are plenty of applications. I will use one motivating example. Say we want to compute the signal coverage of some long wavelength radiation in a large, complex, real-world environment, like a city. This is an area of active research and poses a real open problem. Say you want to optimize the locations of a limited number of cell towers to maximize coverage, but current simulation tools fail to scale to large real-life scenes. The primary challenge is that this long wavelength radiation tends to strongly diffract around objects like buildings, which makes free space diffraction the dominant interaction that dictates the distribution of energy, and simulate, simulating these interactions efficiently is important. So what has already been done in computer graphics? Very little. Some work pre-compute the BTDF for particular apertures, but this is limited and that only applies to mostly toy examples. Elsewhere, a lot has been done. Please check the paper. I will only note that competing methods, under competing methods, light transport becomes non-linear due to the use of mutually interfering primitives. This renders many of the sampling techniques that we regularly use and rely upon in past tracing either irrelevant or much weaker. Therefore, these methods do not scale. Our method is unique in remaining linear. A brief overview. Our requirements have been as follows. We want to continue to use ray tracing because it's practical. We want to diffract around all objects, all edges, all corners. Objects must be represented via typical triangular meshes. And we would like to reproduce the diffraction lobes accurately without any scene-specific precomputations. So back to this double slit example. You might notice a problem. We continue to do pure ray tracing. So say a ray passes close to an object. We should have had diffracted that light, right? But that would require some mechanism, a quarry, that would tell us that we are tracing a ray that passes close to an object. This could be done, of course, at a cost, but we are going to sidestep the issue entirely. We will use something known as Babinet's principle, a piece of electrodynamic theory. Babinet's principle states that the diffraction induced by ge geometric aperture is identical to the diffraction induced by the geometric complement to said aperture. What this means for us is that instead of finding a mechanism to predict when a ray of light passes next to an object and quantifying the geometry of the opening, all of which is very cumbersome, Instead, we will diffract rays that impinge directly upon the object and use a geometric mesh as the diffracting aperture. That geometric mesh is indeed the projected geometric complement, therefore the diffraction law produced by this mesh are identical to the diffraction that would have been produced by the opening. So the broader DI then continue to ray trace. When a ray intersects with a mesh, we use the mesh's geometry directly for diffraction. Some bias is induced by this method, not in the diffraction lobes, but elsewhere. See the paper for more details on how to reduce the bias as much as possible and how to conserve energy. For many applications, that's acceptable. 
So in order to put this idea into practice, our primary the theoretical contribution is a derivation of a closed form expression for the diffraction by a triangular mesh. This enables us to dynamically construct on the fly a free space diffraction BSDF in closed form for any diffracting geometry. We also derive an expression for the probability de density and important sampling strategy that can also be applied dynamically to the constructed BSDF. This is how it looks in practice. Say a ray intersects with a screen, we access the accelerating data structure and look around for triangles, find all the front-facing triangles, and for, from these front-facing triangles, we find all the edges that only belong to a single front-facing triangle. This is, that is, the, the edges that form the silhouette of the object from light's perspective. From the list of edges, we can now construct, using our method, a free space diffraction BSDF. Construction, evaluation, and important sampling are all linear in triangle count or edge count. This is often not too bad. The primary cost is going into the accelerating data structure, rummaging around looking for triangles. As you expect, that's the primary cost. Once a BSDF has been constructed, we may continue to pass trace, pass trace almost as normal. One change needs to be done to the pass tracer internals, and that is finding a new spot from which we continue to pass trace. To find such a position, our implementation just rejection samples the geometry until it finds an opening. Not the best or fastest method, but it is a simple solution that works. Notice that only geometry has been fed to the renderer. No a priori knowledge is given about any diffracting apertures, just geometry. A free space diffraction BSDF is constructed dynamically on the fly whenever we hit geometry. If no diffracting edges are, are found, no diffraction is possible, we continue as normal. Otherwise, diffractions happens around all edges in the scene. This is an example of a full pass tracing simulation with our method um, at optical frequencies. What you see is a collimated polychromatic beam entering the corner box from the left with participating mediums. So you can see the light beam. It impinges upon a screen and diffracts through a rather complex aperture in the center of the screen, giving rise to the colorful diffraction pattern on the right. This is a more complicated uh, example, and this addresses our motivating ex uh, application of signal coverage directly. What you see is a large city with a lot of geometry, complicated geometry that was not optimized for long wavelength radiation. There's a lot of small details and we compute and visualize the irradiance falling upon visible surfaces under long wavelength radiation. This is a ray optical result, and this is a wave optical result with, result with our method. It appears a bit brighter, but this is due to the nonlinear uh, color-coded scale. Energy is conserved. Note the very deep passes and interactions of light with the scene. Reflection, diffraction, reflection, diffraction again something that the state of the art really, really struggles with. Also note how much light uh, reaches the further shadowed regions, something that the ray optical um, um, result fails to predict. Quick note about the search region. That's an important part uh, when we look for triangles. A classical light transport framework cannot provide you this information. And this information in general cannot be guessed or approximated ad hoc at an interaction. It must be provided by a wave optical light transport framework. The information about the waveforms of light, its structure, its statistical properties, how far light is able to interfere in order to produce observable interference effects, meaning how far you need to look for diffracting edges, all that must be tracked by the light transport framework and fed to the BSDFs in order for the BSDFs to do their job. BSDF need to know what they are diffracting. The same applies to any wave optical uh, interaction, be it scattering by microgeometry or free, free space diffraction. If you're interested, check the presentation later this year in Tokyo about how to design such a wave optical light transport framework. The big picture is ultimately that this work serves as a step towards practical general purpose wave simulation using pass tracing tools. 
and slowly we are getting them. Sample code, paper, derivation, everything available online. Thank you. Thank you.